Well, a bit of a shorter intro because we're having a few technical issues today, but it is Super League Raw News on Thursday, the 21st of March. Welcome along, everybody. As always, a packed half an hour is scheduled for you. And as always, on a Thursday edition, we love Rugby League, we do. There you go a few tries there that had it all let's be absolutely fair some brilliant exciting action in round number five in the betfred super league it will be back of course in two weeks time because of this weekend it is the challenge cup right news from around the grounds where we have to start at the warrington wolves matt dufty has signed an extension to his contract keeping him at halliwell jones until 2026 he's been speaking to y tv well, we've come together really close one of that uh pre-season army camp and after that I think we just take steps every week to become closer and closer and um, I'm enjoying really enjoying my time here at, at Warrington I wouldn't rather be anywhere else you know Sammy and Gleese um, they've been massive for me just the way they they get me involved in the game and um, the way they've got us attacking this year it's, it's really suited me and um, you know Sammy's been good for me on and off the field you know um, I've really got along good with him and Gleese and um, the way Gleese thinks about footy it's it's a bit overwhelming sometimes. He's always thinking, he's always moved around, but um, you know, I couldn't uh, wrap them to enough. Dufty is in incredible form, isn't he, for the Warrington Wolves. We spoke at length in Super League Royal Weekly. If you haven't seen it or heard it, then go and check it out on YouTube or download it as a podcast. And this is why we were talking about Matt Dufty. We compared and contrasted him to Jack Wellsby, Jyfield and Arthur Morgan at the start of the season. And look at the stats. It's quite incredible. Scored more tries, more try assists. Look at the tackle bus difference. Incredible. Uh, clean breaking for fun. Eight to, to Wellsby, six there. Uh, tackles very, very even. Uh, the carries 105, 933 metres. Warrington had to do that business. It was essential that they did that business. They've got it over the line. And I'm sure Warrington Wolf, Wolves fans are very happy indeed. This has got us thinking, uh, who else is off contract at the end of the season and who most key teams keep while well, staying with the Warrington Wolves. The only other one really now at the moment that I would expect Warrington will be keen to tie down to an extended contract will be Joe Philbin in his testimonial year. Uh, as for the Wigan Warriors, Bevan French off contract at the end of the season. That'll be a big one for the Wigan Warriors. They will want to keep him at all costs. The NRL are sure to be looking at Bevan French. Tommy Makinson and Lewis Dodd both off contract at St. Tellings. A lot of rumours that Makinson though will leave for the Catalan Dragons at the end of the season. We'll have to keep an eye on that one. What Lewis Dodd I would expect would remain. As for the Catalan Dragons, Mike McMeekin and Tom Johnston, their contracts up at the end of the campaign. Both of those are rumoured to be going to Wakefield Trinity, who are expected to play in the 2025 Super League under the new arrangements. 
Hull KR, well, it's Ryan Hall. I mean, the way Ryan Hall is playing this season, you would expect Hall to be offered an extended contract, maybe just a rolling year due to his age. But expect to see Hall in the 2025 Super League. Reese Martin at the Leeds Rhinos off contract at the end of the season. He's kicking prowess. He's, he's well known to all Super League fans. Uh, can play centre, second row. Reese, really important that he remains at the Rhinos. Look who's off contract at Salford Red Devils, Mark Sneed, currently leading the Albert Goldthorpe, the Man of Steel table, as well as the Super League trophy table. More about that in a few moments' time. But Sneed is in great, great form. He is, without question, the general at the Salford Community Stadium. They will need to keep him. Essen Masters, a very disappointing 2023 for Masters, but it's got to be said, at the start of this season, he has been superb. So again, you would expect Huddersfield will want to keep him and look at what's going on there. The Lee Leopards, Tom Amone. John Asiata, absolutely essential that they remain. Cameron Scott also being rumoured to be off to Wakefield. We think that will be a disaster for Hull FC. Cam Scott for us, especially with the ongoing injury problems of Carlos Tumavari, uh, they can ill afford to lose Cam Scott, unless, of course, they've got an eye on another centre to come in. Jack Broadbent at the Casper Tigers, really solid 2023. We really like Jack Broadbent. Uh, not really got firing yet in 24, but he is a player that they must keep. And as for London, they will be back in the championship next season. And I would expect them to keep Bill Leyland. It's such a shame that Leyland has got a injury that's going to keep him out for the entire season. Because I do believe that had he been playing Super League, there's a lot of opportunity there. He could have actually remained in Super League. So Bill Leyland off contract at the end of the season. But due to him having a year out, he'll probably have to go and play another season in the championship maybe get picked up for 2026 for Super League. Some other big news overnight. A seven-year contract for Matt P, Sean O'Loughlin and Thomas Lulawai at the Wigan Warriors. You've never heard anything like it, but it's not surprising, is it? Matt P has done it all in such a short space of time. They're looking for sustained uh, success out of the Wigan Warriors and in Pete, they trust. This is what Matt Pete's had to say to Wigan TV. Very grateful. I feel, you know, the trust that the club, the supporters uh, have in me at the moment is a, it's a privilege to be in this position and I owe particular thanks to, to Chris, you know, for, I guess, pu pushing me throughout my career, really, uh, but, you know, backing me to get this position, first of all, and then now to to make that commitment to me and my staff, I'll be forever grateful to him and hopefully, you know, I'm paying him back. Get the full interview, you Wigan Warriors fans on Wigan TV. Keep an eye on their social media channels as well. Lots of content around Matt Pete staying on for another seven seasons. Quite remarkable. Right, some Super League Raw news now. There will be no final whistle podcast this week. Challenge Cup weekend due to commitments on myself and the team. We apologise for that. But as well, with all games not being televised, we just don't think we're in a, a good enough spot to commentate on everything that's going to happen this weekend. We will, of course, all be back for round number six at uh, in two weeks' time. So the Final Whistle podcast, no Final Whistle podcast this coming Monday morning for you to download, but it will be back in two weeks' time as we discuss all things round number six with our team talk Members, right. Also, Oliver Partington's in conversation that went live yesterday. If you haven't seen that already, it's a brilliant, brilliant interview. Make sure you check that out on our YouTube channel again. That can be downloaded on Apple, Amazon, and Spotify. Make sure you get a bit of the Oliver Partington interview. Right. Um, enjoying Super League Raw Weekly, Steph Sale said something. As you know, we have started a Super League trophy this season to go to work alongside the Man of Steel trophy and the Albert Goldfort medal. We have always felt that it's a little bit unfair the way those are calculated solely on a game-by-game -game basis. I mean, a player could have maybe 16 great rounds and walk away with a Goldfort or walk away with the Man of Steel trophy at the moment. For example, Theo Farge is having his second in the Albert Goldfort table. What's all that about? And that that basically is a problem. And Steph Sale said, you know, maybe this one will be the, you know, this will be the most prestigious. Well, I didn't think so. I've been giving a lot of thought to this since Tuesday. And uh, we've come up with a, we've come up with a strategy that we think is going to make it uh, more representative of what goes on. So this is how the Super League trophy is going to be scored. As per the Albert Goldfort medal and the Man of Steel, 
midfield. We will work a 3-2-1 point system after every game. But this is where the Super League Raw trophy, for me, gains credibility. For every team of the week selection a player gets, they will receive an additional point. Why? Because they have been the best in the position that week. So you could have, for example, three centres scoring three points in, in, a, in a round. Two of those will be selected for team of the week. So they get an additional point because they were the best two of the three, if you get what we're doing there. Then, of course, we do a team of the month selection. That This is to reward consistency. A player who is in team of the month must play every single round in that month and must have been at the top of their game during those rounds games it could be three games four games whatever it's going to be and if they're in the team of the month they're going to get two additional points and finally every month as you know we nominate a player of the month they will receive an additional three points if they are given the player of the month award this scoring criteria we believe is groundbreaking it's going to mean that whoever comes out on top at the end of the season will have a lot of credibility in it now this is how our league table looked this week before we put the new scoring criteria in. So Mark Sneed, as you can see, was scoring 11, Matt Dufty with nine, Abdul seven, Luke Thompson six, and Tim Lafay also was there with six. But having now used this new scoring criteria, it has changed a little. Mark Sneed remains top, Matt Dufty remains second, but also Ash Handley is joint second now with 12 points. If you remember, Ash Handley was our player of the month for February. And of course, he's currently leading the try scoring chart. So it's only fitting that Ash Hanley should be quite high up at this moment in time. Then it's Jordan Abdul and Nene McDonald of the Salford Red Devils. So we believe that we have put together a scoring criteria that actually is far better than current Man of Steel and current Albert Goldfarb. Keep your eye on that as we go through the season. Of course, we dip in after every five rounds. What we also did on Super League Raw Weekly is we plugged in the sheds. If you've not seen in the sheds yet, where have you been? Here's some of the best bits. And will somebody let me know what box set Franklin Pelly is currently watching because he's spending that much time on his backside. Uh, it must be a belter. Come on, get in the chat, uh, Franklin. Let us know what's your current box set that you're enjoying. You're spending that much time sitting down this season. You're doing no favours whatsoever for your new club. I mean, and then for me, the moment of the night. About two play the balls before Tim Lafay had a little practice one, a little practice one out the back door. And then two play the balls later, there he is on the left-hand side. It's Tim Lafay. Oh, it's another one out the very top draw of Tim Lafay offload. This man has got a repertoire that is absolutely unbelievable and perhaps unmatched in Super League. Burgess used to love playing outside him. Now it's the turn of Dion Cross. Yeah, Dion, mate. I'll do the hard work. Oh, have a little bit of that. Beautiful. Oh, that's what we love seeing rugby league. That's rugby league of the highest pedigree. Tim Lafay, there's no bet at all, absolutely belongs to Mikey Lewis. We featured him in Game of the Week. And quite frankly, based on this performance, if he carries on like that for the season, you may as well shut the book right now on Young Player of the Year because Mikey Lewis will win it all day long. This kid is quality. Quality! That's what he is. Outstanding. Outstanding performance by Mikey. Mikey is so fine. He blows my mind. That's what I say. Um, I'm delighted that we're going to win this. But let's call it straight. At Super League Raw, we call it straight. There's no malice in this. I'm not against the cherry and white. It's fact. Wardle, at, at best... It's a double movement at best. The body, you can see it clearly on the camera angle from the from the stand looking at it. He pulls it back the and stood up to it brilliantly well. That oh, that little offload round the back. Oh, that was glorious, wasn't it? Absolute beautiful, beautiful hands from Matt Moylan for that one. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's almost like watching Demi Moore on a pottery wheel. It was that good. Outstanding stuff from him. In the sheds, we're the only one. We're the only one out there that does a ten minute to camera after every game. Of course, it's fun, it's factual. Make sure you catch up on all in the sheds. They're available now for you to view on our YouTube channel. Right, we do hope that the uh, the postman has been to our two lucky winners, our two members here at Super League Raw, who were drawn at random for a Cadbury's hamper that's on its way. Should be landing in your doorsteps today so keep an eye on that one more competitions of course coming to our super league raw members you've got a great opportunity to join us as well please do join us on the membership it takes a lot of time to put together all the shows that we do all we're looking for is a small contribution uh, you know 
new computers have had to be bought, new platforms have had to be bought to bring you the quality content that we are delivering to you. And of course, we're giving back in some fantastic competitions this season. Uh, as you know, our season tickets up for grabs in the Fantasy League. We're, we're giving away hampers, we're giving away tickets to games. You've got to become a member. And of course, the quiz is on its way as well, which is going to be happening from the 15th of April. So make sure you go and check out uh, all the details that you need to know. This is how you do it. Go to our Patreon website, www.patreon.com slash Super League Raw. Uh, check out the memberships and do consider becoming a member. Right. It's time to get emotional. It's that time of the year again. History, legacy, memories. I don't know about you, but that got the hairs on the back of my neck well and truly on end. It's Challenge Cup weekend time. Round number 16. This is how, of course, it's going to go down. Hulk KR taking on the Salford Red Devils. Wiggy Warriors up against Sheffield Eagles. Batley Bulldogs against the Castleford Tigers. Lee Leopards, Ferriston Rovers. Leeds Rhinos, St. Tellings. Oh, please give us another game like we had last week. Warrington Wolves, London Broncos. Huddersfield Giants. They're going to be taking on Hull FC. And the Halifax Panthers go up against the Catalan Dragons, right? Let's just quickly go around these, starting with the big one uh, Leeds Rhinos and St. Tellings. Good news for Leeds, they will welcome back Paul Mamorowski for this one, as to Sam Lizone, who's back after his three match ban. James Bentley is also available after passing his head injury assessment on uh, I think it's Friday night, wasn't it? Uh, as for St. Tellings, uh, forward Curtis Simonon is back at their disposal this week, uh, having missed the game last week as well. But Tommy Makinson will be out. Uh, because of a hamstring injury. Over to Hull KR now. Mikey Lewis failed an HIA. He's out, as too is George King, who suffered a hamstring injury. So they go into this game about two big players for them. As for the Salford Red Devils, three players return for them in the shape of Cade Cust, Oliver Partington and Joe Mallow. Of course, David Nofaluma as well. He, was he will be better uh, for his game last week. He will be expected to be back in there. As for the Wigan Warriors, if you've seen their, their squad announcement, Cruz Lehman is back in the side. He replaces fullback Jai Field, who'll be sitting this one out. As for the Sheffield Eagles, Matty Marsh and Lewis Peacher come back into contention for their trip to the DW with Cal Wood and Bailey Louis dropping out of the 21. Now to the Castleford Tigers. They're boosted by Paul McShane being back in the squad. Liam Watts is also back. From suspension, George Hodgson, who joined Castleford from Batley in the off-season, uh, has been named in the squad as well. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Craig Lingard and perhaps Tony Smith, two coaches going into this under great pressure. Let's listen to both of them and what they've had to say in their pre-match press conferences. 
need any immediate thoughts. My phone were pinging off uh, off the hook straight away as soon as uh, as soon as a draw were made. Uh, look, it's not it's it, it's not about me in this in this draw. You know, and I guess that's the obvious story, and it with me coming from Batley to Castleford, but it's not about me. It's uh, it's a great tie for uh, for Batley because it's the a super league super league club at home. Um, you know, so hopefully it'll be. Be a good money money earner for Batley there, but you know we've got more important things to to think about rather than it being uh, being focused on me. You know we've got we've got bigger fish to fry, and it's more about the the, the club and the team as a whole. But if there's anyone who knows how to sort of play the the slope at Batley, I would guess it's it's someone like you, isn't it? Well, you don't you don't. So when we've we been there for ten years as a player and uh, eight eight nine years, however long it was as assistant coach and, and, and head coach, yeah, it's. Uh, I think it'll be, it'll be a shock to some of our players who've maybe not been to that ground before when, when they come out and uh, and see the slope that's there. But, you know, this, uh, it's, it's something we're going to have to contend with, but it's, uh, it's something we're going to look forward to. We're five games into a, se- into a season and I think you guys, you know, have already planned the, the celebrations at the end. It's just crazy. There's going to be ups, downs, twists and turns in, in both competitions, you oh. know. It's way too early. Um, I think once a couple of teams lose a couple of games, we and a couple of the more favoured teams win a couple of games, we go, well, all right, well, this is how the season's going to finish. And I asked uh, Warrington about a couple of years ago when they'd won eight straight and, you know, where they finished that season. Twists and turns and ups and downs and misfortunes and go through patches. Um, so... If you're insinuating that this is our only hope to any success in the season uh, in the Challenge Cup, um, tend to disagree and haven't given up hope on making our um, Super League season a success for one. But I have got a great affinity and has this club got a great affinity with Challenge Cup? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, good history, strong history with the Challenge Cup um, through the club and some of their... Their last successes, um, absolutely they have. Uh, I've been on unfortunate end of being behind them, coming second to them on a couple of occasions when I've been an opposition coach uh, throughout the years, um, uh, once at Leeds and once at uh, Warrington. So um, I've, I've suffered some of that history uh, remembrance and celebrations that they have from time to time. Um, but would I like to be part of more of them to come? Absolutely. And same with the players, you know, the, for the players who are still here that were part of that, they'd certainly love to. There's not many of them ne- left now. But, um, you know, we'd like to create some more history for ourselves and more recent history. And that's what we're striving to do. But, um, you know, it's a long, long way off in terms of finals um, we've got a really strong competitor on the weekend they're very good team with a star-studded pack and a star-studded back line so you know we're going to have to perform particularly well if we're going to um, enjoy the challenge cup this year I have to say, you don't hear Tony Smith that fired up, do you? He really did come out punching there in that press conference. He also paid tribute to the great Phil Lowe, heritage number 703 at Hull KR, during the course of that press conference. Uh, If you want to learn more about Phil's glittering career at Hull KR, get over to their website where you'll learn more about the great man. We send our condolences to his friends, family, and, of course, everybody associated with the Robins. Right, as for Tony Smith, back to Hull FC. Franklin Pelly is suspended once again. Carlos Tumavare is also out with a hamstring injury. So Davey Litton and Harvey Barron come into their squad to face the Giants. No real news at this moment. Oh, sorry. As far as Huddersfield Giants is concerned, no news from Ian Watson yet. However, uh, they will be without Luke Yates, Sam Hewitt and Chris Hill due to minor injuries. Uh, but back come Joe Greenwood, Matty English and Thomas Deakin into the squad for Huddersfield. As for the Lee Leopards, of course, they're going up against Featherstone Rovers and it has been announced that Tom Amone out for eight weeks with a broken foot. We got wind of this last week here at Super League Raw. Really bad news for the Lee Leopards uh, announced by 
Adrian Lamb in his press conference. Real, real disappointment there. As for Featherston Rovers, well, halfback Paul Turner is in line to make his Featherston Rovers debut in this one after joining from the NRL. Uh, Wales international fullback Caleb Aikens, he's uh, also up uh, in the squad uh, potentially to play his former club, the Lee Leopards, in this one. Now over to the Warrington Wolves, and it has been confirmed that Roderick Ty will make his debut for Sam Burgess's men uh, against the London Broncos. Also, Matty Nicholson is back in the squad as well. I mean, one thing's for certain, if you haven't done so yet, go onto the social media websites of all of the teams and look at the strength of squad that the Super League teams, especially the 12 Super League teams, have picked. The Challenge Cup is alive and well, folks. Every single coach naming real strong squads going into round number 16. Uh, even those teams that are playing the likes of, you know, Wigan playing Sheffield, Lee playing Featherston, Halifax, Catalan, go and have a look at these squads. And of course, Batley will really fancy their chance we put a poll out, didn't we? Who do we think, if any shocks are going to happen, where could it be? And it was the batley Casford game that you chose. The fans forum on Facebook chose as the potential major upset. What a missed opportunity for the sportsmen because they're showing the Lee Featherston game, not the batley Casford game. And I love that one to be shown on the sportsmen this weekend. The other game on the iPlayer will be Leeds Rhinos taking on St. Tellings. Make sure that you catch that. It's going to be outstanding. The Challenge Cup is back. I mean, we've all got brilliant memories of the Challenge Cup. It, you know, it's just one of those things that come around every year that we're all absolutely delighted to be a part of. Go out there, go and support your teams. And like we said on Super League Raw Weekly, if you're close to another game, for example, you Leeds Rhinos fans, we said it, didn't we? You're very close to Batley. They're playing the old enemy in Castleford. Once uh, once you've got uh, St. Tellings game out of the way, maybe you get yourselves down and support the batley Casper game. Let's, because it's not on the TV, let's try and get the attendances up for the competition that, as children, we all grew up to love. The Challenge Cup is back. Hairs on the back of my head are standing up, and I know they will be on yours. Get out to the Challenge Cup this weekend. You can see there again, I am plugging the membership. Please, please, please. I know it's tough out there at the moment, but a small contribution towards what we're doing would be really well received. And, of course, it, it, you've got chances of winning some brilliant competitions along the way. One of those competitions, of course, is two Challenge Cup tickets. That's right. There is a members' competition currently. Somebody's going to the Challenge Cup final. The tickets have already been bought. They've already been bought. It's a question of who are they being emailed to. That's the only question that we've got to answer, and that answer will come of the week of the semi-finals when we do the draw live on Super League Raw Weekly. Two of our members are off to the Challenge Cup final this year and that one with the only tickets that we're giving away. Some brilliant prizes on the way for being a part of the membership. That is another edition, another half an hour have flown, flown by. It's been an absolute privilege bringing you once again Super League Raw news. Go and enjoy the Challenge Cup, the greatest, the oldest cup competition in Rugby League. <sighs> we'll be back on Monday for another news update. Remember, no uh, Final Whistle podcast this week, but Super League Raw Weekly will be back 8pm live on Tuesday on our Twitter, Facebook and YouTube channels. Enjoy your rugby league, everybody. Bye for now.